We're going to start today's show delving into our nation's history. December 7th marked the 75th anniversary of the attack on Pearl Harbor. This and other military invasions have shaped our world in surprising ways, according to many historians, including author Christopher Kelly. The United States has either invaded, fought in, or had a military presence in 191 of the 194 wars recognized by the United Nations. Christopher Kelly started our interview giving us an update on a Pearl Harbor-related event that will take place in December. Now it's been announced that Prime Minister Abe of Japan will be visiting Pearl Harbor for the first time of any uh, sitting Japanese uh, prime minister. And he's going to be doing that in conjunction with uh, President Obama and then also kind of on the heels of Obama's visit to Hiroshima earlier this year. I see. So that will be very a very historical event. We are talking with you today because of your interesting history. First of all, Christopher, tell us a little bit about, about your personal history. I know you're the son of a Korean War veteran. Yes, my father served during the Korean War. And uh, I also have ancestors that fought in the American Revolution, invading Canada, actually, and besieging Quebec. And also another one who was a general who I- invaded Canada during the War of 1812 as well. His name is Stephen Van Rensselaer. And I would imagine that it's this familial history and connections that have spawned your interest in history, becoming a historian and author, chronicling some of the wars that the U.S. has faced in the past. Right. I've had a kind of a lifelong passion for history and especially military history. And so, yes, I've had a chance to write about American military history with America Invades and also a little bit in in Italian and Roman history with Italy Invades and my most recent book, An Adventure in 1914. What are some of the quirkiest invasions the U.S. has done? Because as I mentioned, the U.S. has had military presence in 191 of the 194 recognized wars by the United Nations. Sure. I mean, that's one of the things in America Invades that we found out is that we have America has cast a very long shadow. I mean, that we have invaded about 44 percent of all the countries in the world, 85 different countries. But we've been militarily involved with almost all the rest out of 194 countries in the U.N. The only three we've missed entirely are Andorra, Bhutan, and Liechtenstein, the Principality of Liechtenstein. So, so yes, we've uh, Americans have gotten around for sure. What does this say about our military philosophies as a country? I think that December 7th is a day that really kind of changed the world. I mean, there have been a couple days like that. I mean, I think 9-11 was another day like that. But d- December 7th specifically kind of ended American isolationism. I mean, the, the nation was united after December 7th to win the war as quickly as possible and united in a way that maybe it has never been before or or since. Uh, so so I think, and since after World War One, after winning World War II, uh, we remain engaged in the rest of the world. And of course, we're involved with the NATO alliance in Europe. Japan, of course, became an ally after the war and the Cold War as well. Now, something that we are concerned with in today's day and age, we worry about America's vulnerability when it comes to the power grid, cyber attacks, those sorts of ways that countries could attack us. So how does that change the definition of invasion? I think that the nature of invasion really has changed over time. And that in the old days, it used to be kind of send in the Marines. And today, it's more like send in the nerds, uh, because you do have this vulnerability that you alluded to of that Instead of attacking fortresses and battleships, uh, they could be attacking, uh, the enemy could be attacking, checking accounts and credit scores. And this happens really kind of the gamut from multinational corporations, American corporations are vulnerable because sometimes they have their mergers derailed from something of that size to something as small as a as a church, a, a nonprofit group who has the misfortune to, you know, record their donors' credit cards is also uh, vulnerable to attack from, from abroad, I'm afraid. And how do we protect ourselves against that in general from a large scale and small scale standpoint as well? Well, I think you have to have defense establishments in place for that. I mean, for instance, the Baltic Republics, who are allies of the United States, are NATO members, uh, Latvia, Lithuania, Estonia, uh, have special cyber defense systems because they actually have been attacked by the Russians uh, already uh, when kind of hacking episodes. And so, I mean, and these are, are things that, that definitely you know have been going on. And I mean, I, I think that 
that there is a growing awareness with with NATO and and with uh, the Pentagon about the nature of the threat, but it it threatens not just you know governments, but you know I'm afraid individuals and institutions as well. Christopher, when I think about the internet, of course, it's a wonderful thing. We rely on it for gathering so much information. And I always say that it seems that whatever you're looking for, you can find support for on the internet. And uh, and then you can yeah. also find the opposite of what you're looking for. So there's right. a lot of misinformation. I'm curious for you, uh, you've got all this great information in regards to our history. I'm sure you rely on the internet to some extent. Why wouldn't you? But what else goes into your research? Who do you talk with? How do you gather well, uh, all of your information? Of course, reading, but I also I think the best thing is when you can actually, you know, get up close and touch things. I mean, like I, in American Vades, I wrote about the raid on Whitehaven, which was done in April of 1778 by John Paul Jones, who was cruising with the ship Ranger, and he uh, actually raided this town on the English coast, and nobody was killed or injured in this raid, but they burned a coal ship. And, but for me, the the best thing was, you know, actually going to the town of, of Whitehaven, where they have a statue that they erected. And, and so, I mean, this incident happened in 1778. You fast forward to 1999, the town officially pardoned John Paul Jones for, for raiding their town. And they launched a, a uh, food and music festival, which has generated like $15 million worth of business in the area. And so maybe uh, military history can be a good business, I suppose. I'm sure. It sounds like it. You know, getting going to the place and seeing it for yourself, seeing where he walked is a great way. And I think for Americans, we have this great opportunity to explore things like in our national parks where we have this kind of amazing history all around us. And, and some of the best historians out there are park rangers, in my experience. And Christopher, I'm sure, like you said earlier, your father, he influenced your love of history. First, let me ask, if you don't mind me asking, is he still with us today? He's not, I'm afraid. No, he's uh, he's no longer no longer alive. But yes, but I you know I dedicated the first uh, my first book to him, American Vades. But I'm sorry to hear of his passing. I'm sure when he was alive, you were able to talk with him extensively and hear his experiences and his firsthand accounts. I did definitely. I mean, he and he was a kind of a source for me. I mean, in a way, I mean, I I interviewed him you know all, all his life and and uh, and all, as long as I knew him. And so his experiences, you know, I even drew on some of them. Uh, I mean, he knew people in growing up and he grew up in Sacramento, California, and he went to a high school where Shaky Johnson went to, who was um, ended up after Pearl Harbor, actually, he joined the U.S. Navy and fought in the, Na- and in the Mediterranean theater, and he learned about pizza, and he brought, came back to Sacramento, and he st- opened up a chain called Shakey's Pizza, uh, which was the first family-style pizza chain in the U.S., mm-hmm. and it, of course, has been copied. It doesn't exist any longer, but it's been copied. But so there's this connection between, you know, World War II and uh, our, uh, the American love of pizza, which was kind of a surprising thing that I included in the book, too. Love that little sidebar. And where can our listeners find out about your books? Sure. Readers and listeners can find uh, the book at americainvades.com and also at our second book, italyinvades.com, and the, the most recent one, Adven- An Adventure in 1914.com, a memoir about my great grandfather being caught up in the start of World War I. Um, they're also available on Amazon and on Kindle as well. And 5% of proceeds go to military charities too. Nice. And Christopher, overall, what do you think the positive benefits are? You you know so much about this, especially we, we can read about it in America Invades, but the benefits of invasions outweighing the consequences. How do you feel about that? That's a great question. I mean, I think that there are some invasions that clearly were, you know, I mean, worth it, if you will. I mean, that you think about Normandy on you know, June 6, 1944, that a year after, Norm, after the Normandy invasion, uh, Adolf Hitler had committed suicide. The war in Europe was over and the Holocaust camps were liberated. I mean, I think you have to say that if it had not been for that invasion, the world would be a much darker place. I mean, at the same time, there have been invasions that, you know, have, have clearly not worked out as well. Uh, and those are, those are included in the book, too. Just tying it back to what we initially brought up in regards to that military presence in, in so many different countries and in different wars. Where does the United States, though, rank as far as numbers of invasions when you compare us to other world's powers? That's a good question, too. My co-author is Stuart Laycock. He wrote a book about British invasions, and he calculated that 90 percent of all the countries in the world were invaded at some point by Britain. So, you know, in contrast, we're almost a piker coming in at 44 percent. So mm-hmm. so America hasn't invaded as much. Uh, but then, of course, we're – I mean, we looked we're also – in. It, uh, Italy invades mm-hmm. in the Roman Empire, and they in- invaded about a quarter of the world. Uh, but, of course, that was before. They didn't even know about continents like North sure. and South America and Australia. 
They would have invaded if they knew. <laughs> <laughs> they might have, might well have. Yeah, they would have probably. Well, Christopher, it's been so great talking with you today. Thanks for sharing your stories and really inspiring us to want to learn more about history. Thank you. Roxanne, it's my pleasure. Thank you.